Alright guys, today we're going to be looking at an engine inside the Dodge Grand Caravan SXT model. It has a 3.6 liter and it has a variable valve timing and basically that just means that it has uh, an option to change the RPMs of the camshaft whether you're slowing down, speeding up, your, uh, or you're at an idle. Uh, it just helps save on fuel. So this engine here, if you notice, it's pretty long since it's a, a van. A van's going to sit higher up. So basically at this line right here and down, you're not really going to be able to see it from the footage that I captured. So this is a V6 engine, six cylinders uh, in a V shape. At the top of the, the V there, at the V points here, you got the camshaft heads. You ha It's a double overhead camshaft. And it, those boxes there just house the variable valve timing mechanisms to change the the uh, the just the flow of the air in and out of the the pistons at idle slow down speed up all that good stuff so since you can't really see below that line that I showed you there earlier I'm gonna be going through here real quick just to point out a couple things below that line especially here on the serpentine belt so here circled you have the power steering pump and it's connected to the back here's a picture of uh, what the power steering pump looks like and next we have the idler there on top and the belt tensioner there uh, to the left in the yellow and the belt tensioner is just something that you can loosen up when you need to do some work and take the serpentine belt off and the idler helps keep the uh, the belt on track with its grooves and next here we have the crankshaft here at the bottom at the bottom of the uh, the V formation there the crankshaft basically just gives all the power to the transmission to move your vehicle it turns in a rotational motion and next up we have the water pump basically it's a coolant pump just pushes the coolant through the engine pushes the cold through and it comes out hot here's what a coolant pump looks like on a Dodge Grand Caravan and next up we have the AC compressor there at the bottom and here's a just a small picture of it and then last but not least we have the alternator some people call it the generator there at the top so that's basically it for the explanation of whatever's below the uh, that line there and next up we're just gonna take a look at uh, what we're looking at on the surface here uh, in this engine so we're not going to be able to uh, see too much here but just gonna explain some of the basic features here so first we got the air filter here you got the engine oil dipstick and the addition port here is the radiator cap and the upper hose and Oddly enough, the reservoir is actually located on the other side of the radiator, so it's uh, it'll be coming up. And here we have the windshield washer fluid reservoir. We're going to zoom in here a little bit to just this uh, this little mess right here. Here we got this little canister, and it's the oil filter. Uh, Dodge made it real simple to uh, change your oil here. Next up, we got the power steering reservoir. You got the uh, intake and outtake lines there in green next we're just gonna continue on the front here you can see the overhead uh, camshaft little housings there so a bunch of wiring harnesses here go to the right we're gonna see the right here this big radiator hose it's the operator radiator hose and we get to the end here and we have the coolant reservoir uh, there's a line attaching it all the way to the overflow cap over there. We're going to move on over here. You see this uh, the battery there. It's covered in that little felt. Come over to the right. A bunch of You see a bunch of fuse box wiring. Here's the fuse box there. The brake reservoir back there. And here's the fuse box with the positive terminal going to it. Back there you got the brake reservoir and the master cylinder. We'll uh, get a closer look at that there in, here in a couple minutes. Next you have the battery, positive terminal in the front, and negative ground in the back. It's covered in a felt uh, little cloth there. I'm not really sure why, but maybe you guys can tell me why there in the comments. So we're going to continue back here. You see the brake reservoir lines uh, using DOT3 fluid. So we're going to continue on here, down here, between the battery and the uh, uh, the actual engine block. There's a bunch of bunch of tubing and wiring harnesses. We'll uh, get to that here in the next couple moments, but I just 
did a little scan through here and then uh, this little cover here a lot of times they put this here just for uh, looks sake just to make the engine look a little bit nicer but this one's real easy to take off there's no screws or anything it's just you just there's four little hooks or pop out little mechanisms you just pull it off and put it back on then you can see the air intake exposed here we got the, the throttle and a bunch of things happening here so there's a bunch of wiring harnesses, wiring clips, uh, PCV tubing, uh, evaporative emissions controls. So this first little hose here is the, the has to do with the radiator system. So we got an arrow here. The coolant's going to be flowing up and to the left, but you also got a T there, and it's going to also go to the right. But we'll get to that here in a couple a uh, couple seconds. But here to the left, you actually have coolant that's warm coming out of the uh, uh, engine and it's supposed to flow to the bottom side of the throttle so any uh, condensed moisture that might freeze during the winter it can get heated up by that coolant flowing by it so that's the purpose of the uh, a small little coolant line there flowing to the throttle body so from the last picture the radiator hose coming up from the bottom this is where it's coming from it's coming from this heater valve so this the coolant inside this hose is uh, really hot just came out of the engine and you saw that it split up there at the T but this little valve is just to uh, just to uh, allow the uh, coolant to bypass it but if not it'll just stop the uh, the coolant altogether here so when you turn on your uh, heat in the cabin it will uh, allow a certain amount of heat to bypass to uh, allow your heater core in your engine to heat up your uh, cabin. So here's just a better view of the the T here. You have your coolant coming up, splitting left and right, again to the throttle body for any condensation uh, build up during colder weather or as your your air starts to cool down for any reason. Then you have to your right here going into your heater core it's just for uh, any heat that blows in your cabin and it'll come back out and I'll show you here in a couple seconds here uh, how it come, comes back out and flows back into the engine and next here I'm just gonna go through a couple of the parts here next to the throttle body so I wasn't really sure what this little connection was you see a wiring harness going to it it's either the map sensor the manifold absolute pressure or an idle air control valve I'm thinking it's the the map sensor just because of the size of it and the map sensor just uh, senses the uh, pressure at the outlet or behind the throttle body and sends all that information back to the engine control unit next here we got the intake air temperature sensor just to sense what the temperature of the air is right before it gets to the uh, intake manifold here we got just the throttle body in general here you might not be able to see it all but it's just in line between the air filter and the intake manifold. Here we got some PCV tubing, or possibly it could be part of the EVAP system. I'm thinking it's actually part of the positive crankcase ventilation, the PVC, PCV, just because the EVAP system sometimes is attached directly onto the throttle body. But we just didn't see it because it, it might be underneath there. So here we're following the air intake here's the manifold it kinda looks like it has three valves right but the there is actually six path passageways the three on top and then there's three underneath that you just can't really see so here's where the air intake actually happens and then here's where the distribution actually happens to all six of the valves so we're gonna continue on here and you see again we have the heater valve just the, the flow going upwards and you have the return of the coolant coming back from the heater core and the throttle body plate and these uh, theoretically these are cooler lines and then you have uh, another line here that it's attaching to so it's going back to the water pump uh, it's theoretically it's supposed to be cool uh, coolant and here's part of that PCV tubing that you saw that was extending there across the air intake manifold that just goes back to the uh, the air filter box and essentially all that's going back to this air filter box is ideally just moist air so we're about wrapping up here there's that T that radiator uh, line T right there there's some of the uh, AC unit protruding out of the firewall and then here we got the 
the brake cylinder and its two lines and those two lines are heading down to the anti-lock brake system uh, the two lines will uh, split into four for your four, uh, your four brake lines so that basically wraps it up um, I hope that helped just a little bit I know I learned a lot from uh, researching this engine learned a lot how a lot of the systems are intertwined and uh, especially the radiator system I learned a lot about that so hopefully you guys enjoyed it um, check out some of my other videos and don't forget to share like and subscribe thank you